morning, everybody. Is everybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. All right. Well, I'm wa- we're, we're changing up things a little bit. Just one more time. Don't fire the pastor. He's just, he's just trying to make the, the experience the best he can in the house of God. Amen. So he's just going with what God says. All right, I'm going to get everybody to go ahead and stand up, and we're going we're gonna to pray, and then we're going to jump right into worship, and we're just going to give God some praise as we worship this morning. Amen? Awesome. All right, make sure. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this day once again, Lord. We are yet to be in your house, Father God. We didn't have to come. We got to come, Father God, and we thank you for that right now, God. God, we just ask you, Lord, just to, just to inhabit our praises this morning, Father God. Just We welcome you into this house right now, Father God. We welcome you into our hearts and our minds, Father God. We just ask you just to have your way in this service today, Lord. It's in our blessed and holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. Let's give them some praise. I know you're back. I know you. I, I hear you breathing. I, hear, I want to hear some noise, okay? We're a little bit, hey, we're a little bit, we're little and we're loud, right? Amen. That's for Jesus. going to, if this world is going to survive, we're going to have to cry out to him that he intervenes a little more. Because it's up to us Christians. I'm, I'm, I hate to tell you, it, it's up to us. I know it's putting a lot on your shoulders, but that's just the way it is. Everything is so messed up right now. It just doesn't make sense to me anymore. We don't, if we don't get on our knees every day and cry holy, holy, holy. No, oh, at church, I just, mm. I put on a little, uh, little desk out in front of the office there and put the in, invite cards on and a bunch of books at one of my one of my customers pranked me their free little Walter Yoho. He wrote two books for us. People are always asking, what's this all about? And it gives me an opportunity to tell them. The, the church has got to get stronger and bolder. And if we don't, well, I don't know. God's going to be upset. Amen. <laughs> Church, if we're not crying, holy, 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 we're not going to be able to enjoy this next song, I'm telling you. Because this holy, holy, holy that we get to cry is because of a glorious day that's coming. Y'all sing it loud, this sing it proud. Come on, church, because I know some of y'all know this song. Y'all just sing it with us as we bring it into our, our, our lives, as we sing about this glorious day that we get to have one day. Amen. Whatever stopping us, Lord, from being a part of your your praise and your worship, Father God, I ask you just to, just to, Lord, we just bind it up right now, Father God. God, I'm asking you right now, Father God, that we can sing about this glorious day, Father God, with open hearts, open minds, Father God, with our hands unrestricted, Father God, with our mouths unrestricted, Father. Lord, we have a powerful weapon within our tongue father god and i pray right now lord that we can use it lord to give you the praise the honor and the glory father god i need you here right now lord inhabiting every single person father god lord i need the spirit to uprise within each one of us father god god whatever whatever stopping us father god i bind it up right now and i loose I loose the love and the mercy and the grace upon you, Father, upon us, Father God, that comes from you. God, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, for our iniquities, Father God, so that we could give you praise, honor, and glory, Father God. I'm asking right now, Father God, that we do this with a heart, Father God, Lord, with a thing, Father God, in our lives, Father, that we can just keep going on going and going and going, Father God. 
God, I thank you right now for what you've done and what you continue to do, Lord. God, it is on you that we give you praise, honor, and glory, Father God. It is because of you we have breath in our lungs, Father God, talent in our hands and our feet, Father God. God, it is because of you, Lord, that we get to walk into church today and give you honor and glory. We get to hear about you, Father God. It is because of you, Lord, that we get to proclaim this word, Father, this word that just beats down the worst of the worst, Father God. It heals us, Lord. It heals us from the sicknesses, Father God. It heals us from the drugs, Father God, the alcohol, Father God. Lord, it even, it even heals our minds, Father God, to put our mind on you and nothing else, Lord. God, have your way, Father God. Have your way in this house today, Father God. It's because of you, Father God, we get to sing, Lord. How many of you can say that his mercy saved your soul this morning, church? If y'all can't say it now, I promise you, by the time I get done with this sermon, y'all will be able to say it. Because y'all are going to say it 26 times today. Amen. You can be seated this time. Bro, uh, Sister Sylvia, come on up and let's do some announcements this morning. We got one more song for y'all while the offering's coming up. But I promise you, you're going to feel Jesus when you leave here today. You're going you're gonna to feel him good fashion this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church, and welcome to Congregational Pentecostal Free Will Baptist. I know it's a long name, but I'm glad you're here today and enjoy the service. It's going to be a great one. Glad you're here. Visitors and owners, uh, I would like to bring your attention to the um, announcements today. We've got much to cover because there's lots happening here in this church. New and old things coming right up. For our first one, uh, today the owners only, uh, we need you to stay after church. We have an, an important special emergency business meeting. We need you to stay behind just for a few minutes. It's not going to take very long. So please stay. Uh, for Bible study, it's that Wednesday at 6.30. Come on. The pastor is doing the book of James. It's a very interesting read. Please come and join us for that 6.30 on Wednesday evening. We're starting something new. It's called Midday Bible Study. Can't come Wednesday night? Come Thursday morning, 11 o'clock. Uh, we're starting that. Um, uh, we have someone who is going to head that up, and I believe that's Nina, right? Nina's going to head that up, and I don't know what they're going to be studying yet, but please come out for that. Prayer time. Not only Thursday morning we've got something going on. Thursday night, eight, from 6 to 8, we have a powerful group of people that come here to pray for not only us as a church but our state our community our nation those people that need that are on our bulletin the back of the bulletin there's numerous too many to to to, to say out loud right now it's just a lot of people that need healing and they need our prayers so those that are on facebook and youtube you have a concern or a prayer you wish to, for us to pray about, um, please email us at congregationalpfwboffice at gmail.com. Promise we won't say it out loud or anybody to know other than those that pray here. Um, so don't, don't worry, we won't say anything. But we will pray heart, heartfully on your concern and prayer. Okay, um, Laundry Soap Outreach, October 2nd. Come, up, come and help us reach our community and we'll be taking laundry detergent to our local laundry facilities, spreading the word of God and inviting those without a home church to come and see how loving our church family is. Please come join us to reach our community and make some noise to let them know we are here and praising the Lord and welcome them and to join our church family. October 10th, we will have an exciting day celebrating our new pastor and his family. Please come attend. It's going to be a great day to honor our wonderful pastor and his lovely wife and Aiden, who is a countless help to this church. So please come out and attend that as well. Um, we have on the back of our bulletin, like I said again, 
Our prayer list is too long to, to name everybody, that, but please keep them in prayer. And now I'd like to have two young ladies to come up front. Oh, yes, I forgot one more announcement. I saw the bulletin from on high waving, yes. Sunday School Adult Bible Study, 9.30 here at the church. Uh, please come. Our wonderful Ray McPherson heads that up. Thank you, Ray, for helping me to remember, because I said it this morning. I needed to remember, and I forgot, didn't I? Good, good. If I keep forgetting, just wave that. Okay, now for Macy and Chloe, we have two birthday girls. Yes. Where's Macy? Come here, Macy. They just celebrated their birthdays this past week. I would like to sing happy birthday to them. Big girls, yes. Here's Macy, she turned three. And Chloe, how old are you? Four. Four, that's an awesome age. So is it okay if we sing happy birthday to you guys? Okay, happy birth, join me church. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Amen. All right. While they're stepping down, I'm going to get my ushers to come forth as we get ready to we get to we get to worship God through our giving. Amen. Amen. Every day. Every day. And then as, as we're taking up the offering, we need y'all to sing just as loud as y'all did beforehand. Come yeah, on, folks. yeah, y'all can sing this. As, as you get, it. yeah, everybody go ahead and stand up. That way you're in a praising time. Come on, everybody stand up. We're here to worship God. It doesn't matter if we do it by song, by word, or by giving. Amen? We're here to worship Him. And we're going to sing this little light of mine as we're taking up the offering, but I do appreciate both of y'all being up here. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I'll pray for the offering for us real quick. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Lord, we thank you for being here in our service today, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to inhabit our worship, Father God, of giving, Lord. That's what worship is about, Father God. It's about giving back to you what you deserve, whether it's by voice, Father God, or by money, Father. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to use this money the best way it can build the kingdom, Father. Lord, let it build the kingdom, Lord, as, we, as you use us to build it, Father. It's now blessed in holy name we do pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
my shine this morning. Come on, church. Amen. Y'all could be seated this time. Barney, Barney is getting excited this morning. Barney is happy to be up. At this time, we will release the kids for their worship service. I do appreciate all the work that Miss Terry, Brother John, and Sister Sylvie do. They're all my sisters and brothers, but for some reason I say it differently every time. But I, I do appreciate what they do. They do an excellent job. If you don't know what Miss Sylvie does back there in the back and you want to know, if you have Facebook or YouTube, you can go check it out. Our Facebook page has it. Our YouTube, um, our YouTube page has something they did last week as they were talking about the Battle of Jericho and Joshua fight, fighting the um, Battle of Jericho. They had all them kids walking around in four walls of cardboard boxes, and then they got to tear it down. So they got to learn not just by word, but also by hand. That's the thing about that's the thing about when you're teaching kids, you got to teach them sometimes by hands-on. They need hands-on stuff, and she has brought that to life. And I do appreciate what she's done there, bringing that to life. Um, I do have one thing I would like to read before I get into my message. Um, Three Sixteen Center sent us a um, a letter, and it says, Pastor Josh Kelly and church family, we want to say a big thank you for the amazing. Welcome, food, and generosity received with you all. We cannot say thank you enough and cannot thank God enough for how he aligns and connects his body. We look forward to being able to utilize the generous gift for 316 Center's monthly outreach as part of our Reach RVA Week. That's Richmond, Virginia Week. Where we initiate random acts of kindness for a whole week to just love the city of Richmond. We can't wait to share what God does. We plan, we plan to, con, to keep you updated and we'll continue to pray for God's incredible favor over your every moment and opportunity that he provides for you all to be an impact in your community and to the moments of sharing his love and gospel to those who need it. Many love and blessings, Pastor Aaron, Brittany Clark, and 316 Center. Amen. Guys, we were able to, we were able to give yourselves a plan because y'all did an awesome job helping them. We, we, welcomed in, we welcomed them into our service, and uh, Pastor Aaron brought us a great message. And, and even people were still talking about it days after him leaving, and that was awesome. That's great to know that you're listening to the pastor, the preachers that are coming up here. That's what we need to do. You know, there's times where the pastor won't be able to stand up here or the pastor will bring somebody in special. I'm glad you gave them your undivided attention. I'm glad that you sowed into the kingdom of God and giving. It's going to be an awesome thing. I can't wait to see what happens in Richmond, Virginia, for, for our, not only for our denomination, but also for our kingdom. Amen? Amen. Well, this morning, I want to officially tell you something. Something that you might, might, you might know, but I want to officially say it in the southernest way I can. Alright? So here's, here's my southern for today. Because I usually throw a little bit in it every Sunday. But here's my, my southern for today. Happy fall, y'all. Happy fall, y'all. We are in the season of fall. Now, many people are probably like, Pastor Josh, why are you telling us happy fall? Well, here's the thing. I love fall. I love the cool weather. I love seeing the leaves fall. Matter of fact, we were, I was out, um, we headed towards uh, D.C. yesterday, a little bit past D.C. yesterday for a conference, and I sent Kelly a, t a picture. I was standing on the steps of the church, and I, and I sent her a picture, and I said, it feels like I'm in the mountains. Had plenty of rolly hills out there in Leesburg, Virginia, but I love seeing leaves fall. I love the fall because my, my favorite sport starts to pick up a little bit. And that's fishing. I mean, I've already told y'all, I've got, I've got family members and friends back in North Carolina. They're already saying, hey, I'm giving you a call when October comes. I'm giving you a call. I'm like, 
you, you can call, but you better bring the boat when you come because if not, we ain't going to make it. But I love that the fish start biting a little bit more. And I love that hockey gets start, it's starting to go. We've got about 15 more days or so before my Carolina Hurricanes pick up and start playing. I'm excited about that. But I'm also excited about there's some hurricanes that are going to stop coming. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I, I'm tired of the Atlantic being so productive in hurricanes. I'm tired of seeing all the, the mess that it, it causes. I, am, I do thank God for all the people who go into action, especially when it hits Louisiana, um, parts of Texas, Alabama, stuff like that. I got family in Alabama now, so I'm glad that they're still safe. But I, I have to say, I'm just a fall kind of person. I'm a fall guy. Fall, fall is a season in which people really sit back and reflect the most about their lives. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, we, we reflect at the new year. No, there's more people who reflect during fall because it's a time of slowdown. See, some people look back to a year ago when they didn't navigate the food days the best. Those food days I'm talking about are the Halloween candy, the Thanksgiving turkey, and the Christmas ham. And all the stuff that goes with it. Some people, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, hold up. I can't, I, I have to remember some of the best food of all that happens during fall. That's the fried Oreos, the fried Twinkies, and the Krispy Kreme cheeseburgers at the fairs. Yeah, I don't even do the pumpkin spice coffee. It ain't no good. It's nasty. It smells weird. I'm talking about the good old fair food. Amen. But also people think about those things that they started at the beginning of the year. When the winter time had rolled around and they said, oh, I'm going to be sitting in the house. Now they're reflecting it in the fall because they started something new and then they stopped. Then they started it back up. Then they stopped. Then they started it back up and then they stopped. I could probably keep going on for four seasons long. But it's a time of reflection that we get to look at those things. We get to look at our resolutions and try to figure out where we went wrong and what we could do to make it better when the new year comes around when we make that same resolution. But most, most likely though, reflections come from not so long ago. I don't know who came up with the name of fall, but I think they got it right when they named this season fall. Because usually you're about ready to fall out come September and October from all the busyness of summer. So many people reflect on summer and they, they reflect on all the vacations they took, all the ball games they went to, to the vacation Bible school that they went to, to the vacation they went on, to the trips they went on, and just in case I forgot to remind everybody all the vacations that they went on during summer. It's a time of reflection through all of that. And now, I, granted, I love that summer creates a busy season because hopefully as this busy season goes through summer and you reflect on it in fall, you actually reflect on it and understand that it was the family memories that you made, not the money you spent. When I think of fall, I think of the time of where I get to relax a little bit because summer is busy and winter's going to be even busier. I don't know if y'all realize this, but winter is the church's busy season. So when we sit back and we think about Thanksgiving, we think about the Christ being at Christmas time. And then by the time we're about ready to get out of winter, what comes around? Well, we think about Christ being risen. I mean, come on, church. Fall is a time where we need to reflect and rest and get ready for what God's got for us. We've got to reflect on the pinnacle part of, of 
of fall. And the reason we've got to reflect on it, because if we don't reflect on it, we won't be able to celebrate it. And that's Thanksgiving. Now, I know many of y'all are probably sitting here thinking, why is Pastor Josh talking about Thanksgiving? Here it is, the end of September. We hadn't made it to October yet. We haven't got to December. Well, we haven't made it to that time of where everything's going crazy. But here's the thing. Here's the question I need you to be asking yourself. Does the Bible teach of a season of Thanksgiving? Or an everyday Thanksgiving. All of us in here at some point in our lives have complained about something that happens in this world every single day, every single year. You want to tell you what that one thing is? Because I used to work it. We complain about the retail stores having all the Christmas stuff up by the time Halloween's over. Where's Thanksgiving? But well, before we can get done with Christmas, they got the New Year stuff out. Before we get done with New Year's, they got the Valentine's Day candy out. Before Valentine's is over, they got the they got the St. Patrick's Day stuff out. They always ahead. They're always ahead four, five, six months most time. And we complain about it. I mean, I even walked into Walmart the other day and I was sitting there and I was pushing my cart along. I was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to go get this. I'm going to go get that. And boom, in the middle of the aisle, in the grocery section, is a 12-foot long display. You know what it is? It's all the bacon stuff you need for Christmas candies and cookies. And I was like, man, we done got started on that. Man, I, I ain't ready for no fruit box cookies and, cookie, and cakes. I don't even eat fruit box cookies and cakes. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I don't eat fruit box cookies and cakes. I love y'all. Y'all can cook me anything else you would like to for Christmas. Just don't bring me no fruit box cookies and cakes because I don't want to hurt your feelings. So you're still getting to know me so I can, I can say things like that right now. But maybe instead of complaining... Uh, instead of complaining about what the retail stores do, what if we took a page from them? What if instead of... Instead of saying that we're going to celebrate Christmas from the 18th of December to the 29th of December... Instead of saying we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving on one Thursday of the year. Instead of saying we're only going to celebrate Easter on Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. What if we start celebrating those things every day? Let's think about this. The newness of life happens daily. Love should be in our hearts all year long. Not just once a year. Diversity should be respected and reverend 365 and one quarter days a year. Not just one month here and one month there. We should all use every hour, all 24 of the hours in a day. No matter how many of the hours are lit up by the sun. Because I, I worship a God, and I hope you worship a God, that created light even in the darkness. He created not only the sun for the light time, but even in the night time, the darkness, He created the moon and the stars so that we could continue doing His work. The birth of Christ and the sacrificial death was not made for a one or two day event. It wasn't made to pack and unpack and pack and unpack so fast that nobody knows we even, cre we even celebrated it. And most of all, we should be thankful not just one day a week or one month a year. We should be thankful every day of our life. The world is made up of seasons. 
And God created those seasons, and we need those seasons, and they come and go. But the answer to the question that I propose to you, that I hope you will ask yourself, not just today, but, today's, but for the days to come, is that every season is a thankful one. Every season is a thankful one. There are so many things to thank Him for. No one day or one season should go by without our thanks to our God, our Heavenly Father. Now this morning, I'm going to need some participation from all those that are here. We're going to read a song. And I need you to read it with me. There's a particular part. It's called a refrain or what we like to call now a chorus, that you need to repeat with me. And it's these words, there's five words, are the five points to my sermon this morning. Yes, I have five points this morning. But I promise you we'll get through them quickly. <laughs> See, here's the reason, here's the reason that we need to be thankful at all times. My five points to my message and these are the words I'm going to ask you to, to say with me as we read a song this morning. For His mercy endures forever. Endures forever. If you will, grab your Bibles and turn to Psalm 136. Psalm 136. And we're going to, we're going to say this song. I'm going to read all 26 verses of this psalm. And it is a song of thanksgiving to God for His mercy enduring forever now if you have other versions of the Bible they might say for his faithful love endures forever mercy faithful love same thing if you, have, if you need to read it on the screen you can it is broken up and we're going to say it. I'm going to read the first part. And as I get to the for his mercy endures forever. I need everybody to reign out with me and say it. Because if we keep saying it. Guess what? We're going to believe it. And if we believe it. We're going to be able to walk out with it. And give it to everybody else that needs it. Amen. Let's start on verse 1. Oh give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His mercy endures forever. Oh give thanks to the God of gods. For His mercy. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. To Him who alone does great wonders. To Him who by wisdom made the heavens. To Him who laid out the earth above the waters. To Him who made great lights. The sun to rule by day. The moon and stars to rule by night. To Him who struck Egypt in their firstborn. And brought out Israel from among them. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea in two. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. For his mercy. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. To him who leads his people through the wilderness. To him who struck down great kings and slew famous kings. Shihon, I hope I said that right, king of the Amorites. And Og, king of Bashan. And gave their lands as a heritage. A heritage to Israel, his servants. Who remembered us in our lowly states. And rescued us from our enemies. 
who gives food to all flesh. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Father God, we praise you right now, God. We thank you right now, Lord, for this song that we get to sing because your mercy does endure forever. Father God, I just ask you, Lord, to open our hearts and our minds. Father God, hide me behind the cross. Let them see you through your word, Father God, and the words that you have proclaimed, Father. It's in thy blessing, holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. So much going on in that song. That's what the songs were supposed to be. The songs were supposed to be there for us to lift up praise to God. This, they were there to, to correct us in a point of saying, you know what? This is going on, but I got a song of praise still. David wrote a lot of these psalms that we read, and then other ones that were written, they were written around the throne room of God. They were sung for praise. In every single one of these verses, we saw things that we're most likely, many of us, understand happened on in the Bible. They were circumstances that happened. God creating the earth. He created it. Why? For us. Why? Because His mercy endures forever. He loved us so much that He created a perfect place for us. And He still counts it perfect even though we messed it up. You know why I still say, you know why I can tell you He still counts it perfect? Because one day we're coming back here. We get to go up to heaven. We get to go see our mansions. And then we're going to come back. As I was in that conference yesterday, my eyes were open to something. You know, I don't usually try to push something that I learned yesterday because I haven't studied all of it. But it, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It, it made sense to me. I've read the part where they were talking about. I get to come back on a white horse with Jesus. And I get to come live in heaven on earth because it's still a perfect place. We got to see in these verses the fact of when, when, the, when the Israelites were running from the Egyptians and they were having to pass through a Red Sea. God loved His people so much. His mercy endured forever. Even though they were griping and complaining. Even though they got to a stopping point, a point of where they said, we can't go no farther. He showed up and said, guess what? I got you. And His mercy endured forever by splitting the Red Sea and then closing on the enemies. We even see a point of where, of where He's killing and knocking down these great armies. These people who thought they had it all. These men that were saying, you know what? Go destroy these people. Go destroy these people. Go destroy these people. But His mercy endured forever. And these kings and these men were no longer. And the verse that really sticks out to me now is verse 23 who remembered us in our lowly state. I don't know about y'all, but there's been a lot of days here lately I've been in a lowly state. I've been at the bottom of my barrel too many days right here lately. But it reminds me. And everything that y'all said, everything y'all repeated, His mercy endures forever. It doesn't stop, church. This morning I'm here to bring you an encouraging message. His mercy endures forever. The mess you're going through right now, don't worry about it. It's still enduring. Yeah, His love is still enduring. You're going to get through it. Let's look at these five words real quick. Really quick, I promise you, I want to look at these five words. Because they... I'm going to say it this way. If we would take the time as Christians to study the Word more than we study people, we 
would never put this book down. If we would take the time, and as much as I don't like English, if we would take the time to just look up words, and you can look them up in the English form, and I promise you that they will talk to your situation right now. It ain't got to be a hard word. It ain't got to be a difficult word. We're going to a first grade word to begin with. And as we look at these words, I want us to just look at these definitions and how they speak to what's going on, to what's happening, to how they intertwine into what God is doing for us. And that's giving us faithful love every single day. That's giving us strength every single day. Every single moment. Look at this first word. For. F-O-R. If you look it up and you define it, it will tell you many different definitions, but here's three of them. The reason. Or because. With respect to. Or in many cases, for many people, in spite of. See, depending on the circumstance, the word will take different meanings. Thanks, to, thanks unto God, it still thinks. But circumstances create differences in the word. Thanks unto God, when we say it, sometimes we don't have that correct meaning into it. But thank goodness, He, he knows what it means. He knows that it means that we reverence Him. That we thank Him for what's been going on. See, it might come from a new thing created. Or through a hard time that you've made it past. But we have to remember, no matter what, and no matter how many people are against us, as long as we have God for us. Did y'all get that? God for us. He has respect for us. He has the reason for us. If everybody is against us, as long as we have God for us, everything will be alright. Everything will work out. If that ain't something to praise Him and thank Him for, what is? He is for you, church. He is for everything that you're doing. Everything that you're doing in reverence to His kingdom. For His kingdom. I believe it says in one part of the Bible, y'all tell me if I'm wrong or not, that He takes evil things and turns them to good for those who love Him. In spite of the evilness that's coming forth, He still does things for us. Church, we can't forget that three little letter, letter word here. For. So many of us quote it so fast that we don't even know what's going on. For God so loved the world. What's for? Because God loved the world so much He created His Son. Because God loved the world, He created His Son. God respected the earth He created, so therefore He created His Son. In spite of all the mess that the human race had created, He still sent His Son. For is a powerful word. Look at the second word. His. For His. Now His is defined as that which belongs to Him. Or relating to Him. If it wasn't for what he did, 
from creating the universe, the land, the people, and sending His Son to the earth, both then and in the future, he would have no, we would have no relationship with Him. He owns the cows on a thousand hills, but yet He still counts His children as the most important thing. If you didn't know this morning, you were important. You were kind. You were created in a kind man a manner. You were created. I don't care. I don't care if your mama left you, your daddy left you. I don't care what happened with all that. You were created in a kind manner. Because once again, it says in my Bible that He created me in the womb. He knew me before my mother knew me. He created you in the womb. He knew you before anybody else did. You and I are the children of God. And He did everything for us. He sacrificed His Son for us. He created this earth for us. He created all the other people on this earth for us. Even the ones that we consider thorns in our side. He created the cars that we drive even though they explode all the time. Can I tell you something? You might not like this. He even created all those enemies that are trying to destroy the United States of America right now. He created all those people that go out and shoot somebody. Do you know why? Because for His mercy endureth forever. The bad things that are happening, the bad people that come after us, guess what? He still created them. He still loves them. He even loves them to the point in which they go to hell. Guess what? If they do go to hell, I can't condemn them. I'm not saying they do. But if they don't accept Jesus Christ, that's where they're going. He loves them up until that point. Why? Why? Because we are all His. He owns us. He created us, therefore He owns us. And we're not using own as a bad, as a bad word. We're using it into the fact of that we are His. We get to count. All the stuff that He owns is ours. He says that we're heirs of the throne of God. So therefore, if He owns the cows... On a thousand hills, by golly, I get to get my cow at the very end. I get a cow. If you want something else, guess what? He owns that. If you want that 1957 Bel Air, guess what? If you can't get it now, he'll give it to you then. He owns it, he owns all of them. All those things we call rust buckets and people pay thousands of dollars for those rust buckets and turn them into something else. Guess what? God still owns all those cars. God still owns that first 19 whatever Model 4T with spoke wheels that people wouldn't dare drive nowadays because they can't go over 10 miles an hour anyway. But guess what? It's still His and if we want it, He'll get it for us. Because we are His heirs. And I'm going to tell you something. If He's going to call me His, I'm going to give Him a praise, a thanks for what He has done in my life. He has kept me. Church, we got to remember His mercy endures forever. But we are His. Look at the third word. Mercy. For His mercy. Mercy is defined as a blessing. That is an act of divine favor or compassion. Or a kind of forgiving treatment on someone who could be treated harshly. His mercy endures forever. That means we're not having to worry about a harsh treatment. We think we're going through harsh treatments now? No, we're not. 
I'm not, walk, I'm not walking up here. I know i got a clean side here, but guess what? I'm not walking around with somebody taking a knife to my hair and cutting my hair off. Because I say I am a Christian. I'm not walking around with two broke legs because I told somebody I was a Christian. I'm not laying in front of you in a casket because I said to somebody, I'm a Christian. His mercy still endures. The things that are happening, the things that we say are, were, are bad things, that people are going and persecuting Christians. Ain't nobody persecuting a Christian in the United States of America. Go ahead and tell you. They might be taking, they might be taking prayer out of schools. They might be telling me that on October, I think, 5th or 6th, or whatever day it is this year, that kids can't bring their Bibles to school even though it's National Bible, uh, Bring Your Bible to School Day. They might, be, they might be telling me that I got to pray at the end of a sermon or end of a service and say amen and a woman. But guess what? That ain't persecution. That's just somebody being an idiot. Call it like it is. Can I be real with you real quick? That's man trying to rule what God created. That's what it is. See, mercy is a characteristic of God that we can receive through the acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It allows us to get through one second, one minute, one hour, one week, one month, one year. It allows us to get that. But even better yet, can I tell you what mercy will give you? It'll give you a chance to hear the words. Peter, open the gates. His mercy allows you to walk through some pearly gates. And if that ain't something to shout about. I get to walk through pearly gates because somebody has compassion over me and all the stupid things that I've done. I ain't made it to the idiot part yet. I'm just I'm at the stupid part at this point. But His mercy endures forever for the things that I have done wrong as long as I confess and give thanks to Him as my Lord and Savior. And it's no different for anybody on this earth. Another point that was brought up to me yesterday, and, I, and this is something that was in my mind already, hearing it again is just an affirmation from other people and from God because God uses the same exact words that are in my head. Here's the thing. Here's what was said yesterday and I knew it. I already knew it. There's not a thing, not a prophecy, not a sign, not anything that we are waiting on that God is waiting on except for one more person to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's not a sign. There's not a sign saying that we got to wait. That God's waiting for one more war to start. Or one more conflict to start. He's not waiting on any of that before Jesus Christ comes to get us. Not a thing. But why are we still waiting? Because His mercy endures forever. He has mercy waiting for that one soul to accept Jesus Christ. Church, can I ask you this morning, can you wait a little bit longer for His mercy to hit that one more soul? Can you deal with the IRS breathing down your neck every year for that one more person to be in the kingdom of God with us? Can you deal with that one more time 
of your neighbor aggravating you, playing music too loud, or somebody coming up to you and telling you you're, you're an idiot for believing in God and believing in Jesus, can you deal with that one more time for His mercy to endure for that one more person? His mercy endured for you. His mercy endured for you. As it was told to us yesterday, especially if we were born after 1948. I got that year right, right, Brother Michael? All right, awesome. 1948 is when Israel became a nation. And if you were born after that, guess what? God's mercy endured for you to be saved. Can we wait, church? Can we keep working, church, for His mercy to endure to that one more person? We don't get to know who it is. If I read my Bible right, and if y'all if y'all perceive it the same way, Jesus don't even know. God is the one sitting back saying, All right, I'm waiting for so and so. I'm waiting for so and so to, to accept my son as his Lord and Savior, or the, her Lord and Savior. And then he tells Jesus, Hey, go get him. Go get him, son. Because his mercy is waiting. His mercy is endures forever church we got to be willing to praise them through it every single second of it once again we hit a wrong chord we sing a wrong note guess what his mercy's still enduring he's still going to get us through the song church we got to keep going we got to keep going this morning look at the fourth word there endures for his mercy endures it means to continue in the same state or to undergo, especially without giving up. There's this thing that people call the Iron Man race. It's an endurance race. It's some highly trained athletes that go through that mess. They run for way too long, in my opinion. They swim for way too long, in my opinion. And they ride a bike for way too long, in my opinion. But it's, a, it, it's not even a race between number one and number two. It's a race between number one and number one. You can ask anybody who runs professionally. And I promise you, this is what they're going to say. It's nice to win, but I'm just trying to beat my last time. I'm trying to build my endurance up. I'm trying to make sure I don't give up. I had a cousin who ran, who decided to run a marathon. And he was a very, uh, very athletic guy. I mean, he's had to do some running in his life. Physically, not spiritually. Uh, spiritually too, but... He had... And... and when I got an update on him, he said, before I got to mile 13, I was ready to give up. He said, I'm not a runner. But I wanted to test my endurance. We say things about endurance like this. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. But the trials... That we endure, purify, mature us, not just for now, but for our relationship with Jesus Christ and with God. The temptations we endure remind us of who we put our trust in. It's God's attribute of endurance through all time that allows us to get His love, His mercy, and His kindness. Even from the day He created the heavens and the earth to the day that, we, that, that Satan gets put into the lake of fire. It's His endurance 
It's His endurance of mercy that allows us to get through that one second, that one minute, and so on. It's the endurance that, God's get, that God gives you through His mercy that allows you to get to Monday. And sometimes I know the feel, I know the feeling that y'all have. Sometimes it's His endurance that He gives you through His mercy that allows you to get through the pastor's sermon. I know. There's sometimes where we can't help but nod off in the middle of a sermon, middle of a message. I have to say, I, I will confess my sins before everybody here today. I did it yesterday. The man was speaking a great message and I nodded off. I was tired. They had filled my belly with Chick-fil-A and I was done. I had Chick-fil-A twice yesterday. I had God's food twice in one day. I've had it twice since COVID hit. I had it twice yesterday. That means I've had it twice. I had it just as much yesterday as I had the whole time. But God filled my belly with His good food. And it was hard to listen to His message. I know what happens, but it's His endurance that gives us that, that time of mercy and love that we get to sit back and say, you know what? For His mercy endures forever. I'm going to get through this mess. I'm going to get through this crap. I'm going to get through whatever's going on. I know something's coming up tomorrow. I'm still going to get through it because His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for letting Your mercy endure forever. Look at that last word. Forever. Forever is defined as at all times. Or as at a seemingly never ending time. Church, I, I don't know if anybody has ever thought about it this way. But forever truly means forever when it comes to His mercy. If His mercy didn't endure forever, I wouldn't have a mansion in heaven and a great building on earth to live in. If His mercy didn't endure forever, the churches would be closed all through COVID. If His mercy didn't endure forever, we couldn't say, there's going to be a president, a better president that's going to come in and help us right the ship for the United States of America. If he didn't have mercy forever, the churches that lost the pastors, that the pastors have left, if his mercy didn't endure forever, a new pastor wouldn't step in. How do I know that? Because new pastors wouldn't be born every day. New speakers wouldn't be made every day. Church, we have a forever. We've seen a forever. Only God, the Alpha and the Omega, can give something that never ends. He is the beginning and He is the end. He is the only one who can create something in the middle. He is the only one that can give something out of the middle. If you look at forever, break it up into the two words that it is. For. We've already talked about that. Meaning, in respect to. And then the other word, ever. Meaning, at any time or any way. When does God show up? God usually shows up in a situation when there ain't no other way. He has forever at His hand. He can say, you know what? For my love and respect to my child that I created that has called upon the name of my, my son, Jesus Christ, I will make a way when there is no way. Forever. Church, if we can't shout and give Him thanks for forever making a way when we don't see a way. If we don't give Him thanks for the things of which He's given us when we're not even supposed to have it, He still gives it to us. 
He still creates it. He, still, he will make something out of thin air if He needs to, if it means you getting past the situation. You know how I know this? Because there was once a day in this world and on, on the timeline of what we, we, we have lived in, there was once a day when this thing that I have to I have to inject into my body every day, insulin, wasn't there. Nobody knew about it. They knew the body created it, but they couldn't figure out the rest of it. They couldn't recreate it. But one day, out of thin air, he gave somebody an idea. And he said, hey, you go take the pancreas out of a pig. You go to take a pancreas out of a cow. And you can put all these other elements that I have created on earth that you play with every single day. Combine them all together. And you'll have insulin to save the people whose pancreas doesn't work. He didn't just do it with, the, with insulin and diabetes. He did it with all these other things. Hello? The, I mean, guys, if you look it up, the natural age of somebody living should not be 80, 90, 100 years old. That is not... God had that. God allowed people to, to live 900 years. And He said the older they got, the more mess they created. So I, I, I'm going I'm to knock that off. He said, let me back it down about 800 years. But the natural age is not for us to live that long. Why are we living that long? Because God created something out of thin air. I mean, how do we figure out that if we put electricity to somebody's body who's laid there with no pulse, if we put electricity to them, they're going to start, their, pul their pulse is going to come back. God created that out of thin air. God had that already. Because His mercy and love endures forever, He allowed us to have it. And even on those times of where we are laying down in a bed and we don't have anything left in us, He still says, My child, my mercy endures forever. And then that child wakes up looking at Jesus. I mean, think about it. You close your eyes on earth, you open your eyes to Jesus. Because his love and his mercy endures forever. I mean, we just sang a song. And where we were shouting and saying, Holy Holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Do y'all know that there's going to come a day where we're going to be standing in front of that Lamb of God singing, Holy, holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty. Amen. Why are we going to be standing there? Because His mercy endures forever. So today I want to remind you that no matter what has happened or what's going to happen, God's got you. You might feel oppressed or depressed, but God's got you. You might feel worried or lost, but God's got you. You might be happy and excited. Why? Because God's got you. And you might feel strong and unbeatable. Why? Because God's got you. We got to give Him thanks, not just in a season, but every day. His mercy endures forever. We got to thank Him for that forever. We got to say, you know what, God? You got me through Sunday, and here it is Monday, and I'm waking up, and I get to go to work, and I get to go tell somebody about you. Lord, I thank you for allowing that mercy to endure one more day. You might get it, you might wake up Monday, and you might say, oh man, what am I going to do? 
You might wake up and say, you know what? That gas tank's really low. Uh, how am I going to make it to work? How am I going to make it? I ain't got but $5 sitting in the bank account. And I need $6 to make it through the day. Guess what's going to happen? Same thing's going to happen to you that happened to me. Let me tell you what happened to me. I'm going to testify a little bit. I was walking into a, to a, a place. I was going to say a facility. It looks like a facility. It's got a, it's got a big red circle then a small red circle. If y'all know what that place is, y'all know y'all can't walk into that place and only spend $5. But I was walking into that place and guess what? I was walking in and I was like, you know what? I got $35 and I need about $50 worth of groceries to get through the week. I was like, how am I going to do this? I started walking, I started walking. And I didn't say it. I didn't know, I didn't realize it at the time that his mercy endured forever. I had to read this song before I realized it. I knew it in my heart, but I didn't realize it in my head. But I was walking, and next thing I know, I see something on the ground. And it's windy, so I put my foot on it. And I looked around. Like, well, ain't nobody running. So I bend down and I pick it up. Guess what it is? It's a $5 bill. His mercy endured forever to make that $5 go to $15 that it needed to go. But he made it possible for me to get that $5 when I picked it up. Won't nobody running back towards it? I stood outside waiting for somebody to come looking like this. I mean, running around, looking, 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 see where that $5 was. But God blessed me with it. I hope he blessed the person that gave it. Because they gave it. Might not have been willingly, but they gave it. But I got to get my stuff. Why? Because his mercy endured forever. God had my back. Even when I didn't even have my own. Church, this morning I hope that this song will go into your heart for the rest of the day. I've been singing so many songs with all this stuff. Because there's been some great writers of songs that we sing that, that have written those same exact words in the songs. So I've been hearing this thing for the past week saying, His love endures forever. For His love endures forever. For His love endures forever. Do you know what? As I was hearing that in my heart and feeling it, and I knew exactly what was going on in the world, I still said, For His love endures forever. IRS sends me a letter about my taxes from last year saying that if I didn't pay the differences that they were going to take it out in the next one. Guess what I said? His love endures forever. As I kept reading the letter, I figured out that they had already taken that money so they weren't going to come back and get any more. But if they do, guess what? His mercy endures forever. I don't need what man's going to give me. Now granted, please don't hold any paychecks from me or any blessings from me. I still need to pay the bills that man has created for me. But the thing about it is, am I putting my trust in the money? What man created? Or am I putting my trust in forever? Forever. God didn't have to create the heavens and the earth for us. But His mercy endures forever for us to be with Him. I know we hadn't been doing no shouting. But here's the thing what I need everybody to understand and really get. We got to thank Him for those mercies that He's given us forever. And I'm hoping we start them in our heart and they start crawling up our neck and they start shouting out. Because church, I can promise you, 
I'm up here and I'm going left and right and I'm, I, I'm, ready, to, I'm ready to jump and shout. And I could do it by myself if I need to. But what I need everybody in here to do is to get to the point of where they can jump and shout on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday. What's the song say? Every day. Every day. I need us to be willing to shout every day. Not just on Sunday. I'll take you rest in your voice on Sunday if you need to. But if you ain't shouting on Monday through Saturday, you better come in here shouting the loudest you ever shouted in your life. Because His mercy endures forever. Will you stand with me real quick as I close? Sister Kelly, um, wife Kelly, First Lady Kelly, however y'all want me to announce to her, will you um, allow, um, go and tell them that we are closing up and we'll be starting our meeting shortly? This morning, I just need to make sure everybody knows. Y'all said it 26 times, but I need to make sure y'all really understand it. That His mercy endures forever. So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want to ask a simple, blanketed question for everybody in here. And I just need you to raise your hand if, if, you, if you need this. I need you to raise your hand. As every eye is closed, every head is bowed. Only I can see this. Only, only what I'm asking, I'm the only person that's going to see this. If you need to ask some more mercy in your life, I just need you to raise your hand. If you need to ask God for some mercy to get through tomorrow, I just need you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you. That's, that's, that's point blank all it is. Yes. I, I see the hands. I see the hands. Yes. God, I pray, Lord, for every hand that was raised, Father God. You saw them. You know them. You know them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And God, I, 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 you have laid upon my heart to make sure that those people are prayed for. That those people know that your mercy endures forever and that you will give them mercy for that day. That you'll give them mercy for the next situation and the next situation and the next situation. God, I pray to you right now, Father God, for each hand raised, Father God, for those who, who have a special thing that needs to be taken care of or that's going to be needed to be taken care of, Lord. And we, we pray, Father God, and we come to an agreement, Father God, that your mercy will take care of it. Because it is a forever mercy. It doesn't matter if our enemies are at our backs and there's a wall or a sea in front of us, you're going to take care of it, Father. It doesn't matter if something needs to be created out of thin air, like the earth, or the sun, or the moon, or the stars, Lord. That You love us so much that You will create something to give us that mercy and allow us to get through it. God, and I pray, and I thank You for that mercy that You're going to give us, Lord. For those rulers that rule over us, Father God. That put us in situations that we don't want to be in anymore, Father God. That tell us we have to do something when you tell us, no, don't do it. Father, I thank you for that mercy, Lord, in our lives. God, I pray, Father God, together, Lord, that we see your mercy, Lord, come, come into, into our sight, Father God, through souls saved. Of those people who are walking around right now, God. God, I just pray for that mercy not only to be a head knowledge, Father God, but a heart knowledge. Knowing that You've got our back. That You've got us and You've created something called mercy for us to take. For us to receive as a gift. And God, I pray if nobody's received that gift of mercy and love and kindness that was sacrificed on 
that was created by a sacrifice on, on a cross by your son Jesus Christ, I pray right now that they will receive it, they will live in it, Father God, and they will allow somebody to know that they did it. God, I pray for those people right now. God, I thank you for those people right now. Lord, it's through your Son's name, that high name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated at this time.